Fun fact to start off the video! The Impaled Dragons in Blade Edge Mountains aren't just bad at flying. They are the reason Gruul holds the title of a dragon killer. So hey guys and welcome to another nostalgic run. Today we're gonna do Gruul's Lair. And yes, that's the same Gruul we fight in Blackrock Foundry. But in this timeline, in our timeline, instead of him being like Black Hand's pet, Black Hand's puppy, he's the dragon killer. Alright, Gruul's Lair only has two bosses. The last boss is Gruul, or the second boss is Gruul, the dragon killer. And the first one is High King Molgar with his council. Now, if you thought in the previous video that, you know, warlocks tanking Leothoros the Blind was kind of cool, well, you're about to be amazed, I think. This boss, just, I remember every single thing from this boss because it was so goddamn unique. Right? It was so goddamn unique. Gruul is like, pfft, whatever, Gruul. But this guy, yeah, th this was the cool stuff. So you can see there is five dudes in here. Now, by this time, most raids were either 25-man or 10-man. Karazan and Zulgur, uh, Zulaman, not Zulgur, Zulaman, I'm sorry. They were 10-man, and Makhtaridun's Lair, you know, Serpent Shrine Cavern, Black Temple, Gruul's Lair. They were 25-man. Now, you would usually just have two tanks by this time. Because tanks in the Burning Crusade, well, they didn't really do any damage, they didn't do any healing, so having more tanks was more of a detriment than you might think. Because today you bring three tanks, yeah, you have kind of one weaker DPS. Because tanks do a lot of damage, and Death Knights do a shit ton of healing as well. Now, how would you tank five guys with two tanks? The answer is, you wouldn't. Alright, one tank would be tanking High King Molgar over here. Where is it? There it is. Right here, you'd be wedged over here because he did some knockback bullshit. So you would stand here, you would have your camera like this, that was usually me, because I had better gear. And he would stand here, you would have your camera like this, and he would tank him over here. Right, on this little puffy thing, smoky thing. Now the other tank would pick up Blind Eye the Seer. Now this guy, you would have to kill this guy first because he's a priest, so he would heal things. And I think he put bubbles on things as well. So this guy would be tanked up here. Come on. Oh my god, Blizzard, please fix this. There we go. He would be tanked somewhere around here. Alright. Now we still have three guys remaining and we have ran out of tanks. So what you would do, which is amazing, is on the summoner is going to spawn uh, fell hounds. Now what you would do with those fell hounds is you would enslave them. So you would have your warlocks and they would enslave every single fell hound he would summon and they would then use those fell hounds to tank him. If you ran out of warlocks to enslave those fell hounds, you would cast banish demon on them. Okay, so if you have five warlocks, that means you can have um, five enslaved fell hounds and five banished fell hounds. So that's ten fell hounds in total. If you get more than that, you know, if you get more fell hounds, then you have warlocks. Then you would have to kill them, which would not be preferable. But this guy was usually the one who got killed second. So you would kill this guy. Then you would kill this guy so you don't run out of warlocks because he will just continuously keep summoning fell hounds. So that would be the second guy. He would be tanked by warlocks with his own fell hounds. Now this guy over here is a mage and all he would do is he would cast a fireball and he would put a buff on himself which would be a magic shield that would reduce magic damage taken by like 80 or 90 percent. This was spell stealable. So you would have a mage spell steal his shield over and over again and then tank him. <laughs> Alright? So this guy, you would have a mage standing up in here or that's how we used to do it. We would have a mage up here and he would constantly just cast fireballs or whatever it was by that time. I think it was fireballs by this time. Um, and he would spell steal his shield over and over again. And this guy would be killed the fourth. The last guy we have to tank or do something about is Kigler the Crazed. Now this guy had to be kited. And the way we used to do it, and probably most guilds do, did it as well, <coughs> is you would have two hunters. And I don't know if hunters have this ability anymore. It was called something like Distracting Shot. And it uh, did a huge amount of threat. 
Okay, it generated massive amounts of threat. So what they would do is one of the hunters would stand, where was it? Over there, I think? And one of them, like, here? I don't remember that very well, unfortunately. What they would do is they would alternate this shot. So he would be constantly running between them. All right? So the whole thing, how to deal with this fight, is you tank this boss over here. You tank the priest up there with your second tank. You have warlocks enslaving the fell hounds on the summoner is summoning and tanking him with his own fell hounds. You would have a mage stood up there, constantly spell steal his shield and tank him with spells. And then you would have this guy running between two hunters all the time. And then you would kill Blind Eye the Seer because he's a priest. Then you would kill the summoner so you don't run out of warlocks to control the fell hounds. Then you would kill Killer the Crazed. Because, well, if he hit one of the hunters, that was bad. So you would kill him, then you would kill Krosh, and then you would kill High King Molgar. Oh, that's how my guild used to do it. Some guilds actually didn't kill High King Molgar last, I think. I'm not sure about that, don't quote me on that, but that's how we did it. We did Blind Eyed the Seer on the Summoner, then Kigler the Crazed, Korosh Firehand, and High King Molgar. And that was cool as hell, and I do believe he drops a um, tier 4 shoulder token I think that's right so that's the fight that was the fight and it was it, it was so cool I remember it to this very day very well so let's just blow them up with blade storm shall we <laughs> there we go and we get I do get the show I get two of them actually so that was the first boss it was so much fun <clears throat> this boss was seriously cool there was some cheese tactic used on him later on, but that was... By the time I was already in tier 5 raids like Serpent Shrine Cavern and um, Tempest Keep. So I never really did that. But I do remember there being some crazy cheesy way of killing him. So we kill you know, a couple of dudes, a couple of brutes and ogres, and we get to Grohl. Now he still has his hand. He doesn't have a hook instead of his hand like he does in... Um, uh, <laughs> Warlords in Blackrock Foundry. And there he is, Gruul the Dragon Killer. Oh, yes. And he does quite a few things. He grows larger. You know, in the beginning he's kind of small, but then he glows, grows huge. And um, the ceiling would fall down and all that good stuff. The... Um, I would say it's the... Um, the Blackrock Foundry version is a fairly good representation of Gruul. Okay, there are some different abilities, but that's kind of how the fight used to work. Kind of. So we're gonna blow him up. There you go. Come here, Gruuly. There we go, Gruul's lair. Ta -ta! And he drops the pants. Now, this is a fairly nice looking uh, weapon. And he used to drop an axe that was really tiny. Like, really tiny. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Gruul's Lair, very quick, you know, but I really wanted to do Gruul's Lair because, you know, it's Gruul, <laughs> and we have Gruul today, even though he's kind of different, and, you know, he has a hook for it instead of one hand, because of Iron Horde, what what, and then the first boss, the Hiking Molgar fight with his council was just amazing, so I didn't want to skip this raid, even though it's fairly short, so I thank you all for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. If you have any suggestions on what kind of raids you would like to see, you can always tell me, by the way. <laughs> I do take requests. Even though some people think I don't, I do. So there you go. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.